uh, this is the story of Jacob. He's coming back from he's coming back from his uncle's house. He's been there over 20 years. He has struggled so much uh, and uh, he has been how do I call it? Mistreated by his uncle for so many years. He's been working for him for a while. For so many years in fact. That can even add to 20 years. And the uncle could not allow him also to have his own possessions. He reached a point when he said, you know, you have two wives, you have children, and you have nothing of your own. Only serving somebody. There's a time he felt like, this is too much. I need to wake up. Amen. Uh, he says, I need to wake up. How can I serve somebody for so many years? Imagine working for somebody 20 years and you still have nothing. How does it sound? His, his, his uncle was promising him, he promised him salary. He said, I learned that from the time you came here, is when I began prospering. Remember, Jacob is somebody who has uh, what they call it? The promise of God. The promise of Abraham is to be fulfilled through Jacob. Not Esau. And then before the, that promise of God comes to pass in his life, he has hustled. Is that what you used? What, what we normally say in our time. He's been hustling for over 20 years. Tamaking, trying to look for things. Yeah, at some point God came his way. Because he got, now that he developed skills to look after his uncle's flocks, he got more skills because he has served for that long. And uh, at least he got something. Some possessions. Which also was a bit of snare to him. I mean snare. What I mean by snare is now you have you've agreed with the, the person who employed you on how you are going to get your own position. He says, I am not going to, I don't, I want, don't want wages, you know, salary. He says, I don't need salary. Because where I have, I have reached, I can live without salary and get my earnings more than what salary can bring. He will reach that level in Jesus' name. Imagine reaching a place where you can create wealth more than what you get in a month or more than what somebody can pay you. That's where he reached. But you see, still he was struggling. It is like something is hindering his progress. The skills that he has, with the knowledge that he has, uh, owning what belongs to him even when his skills and works can give him was like it is not easy. You have the skills, you have the knowledge, you have the hard work, but then you cannot get what you want. You don't have freedom. That is bondage. That's called bondage. Imagine you don't have freedom. That is when you need to learn that there is something spiritual about everything. 
that is something spiritual about everything that we do even the very work you do even this kind of ministry that we do like what we are now the ministry we are running in this church uh, if prayer is not intensified it looks like something has sat on you <laughs> nothing is moving nothing is nothing is moving nothing can so uh, one of the things that i think jacob realized i just realized this uh i think he just needs the 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 move of god in his life how can i put it he just needs god god's visitation here he is running from laban laban was chasing him and then god warned laban <laughs> he warned laban take care <laughs> imagine god warning you because you want to attack somebody else god don't laban don't try don't try but then still something is bothering him it is over 20 years since he left his hometown when he left home it's like he stole somebody's birthright the first born Esau is waiting to kill him <laughs> is running from Laban So where is heading somebody is also waiting for you. <laughs> huh? I don't know what you you see this thing. What kind of man is Jacob? <laughs> huh? You are running for your life on the other side. I had also <laughs> something is somebody is waiting for you. And you know what you did. So what is your what will you do now? It's like you are in the middle of a danger. Both sides, somebody is waiting for you. Amen. I know you are praying for me. Many of you, I you know. Uh, and you will give you will get the grace to hear the word of God. In Jesus name. So look at Jacob. Being chased from this side. This at the end somebody is waiting for him. Where do you run now? I was told of an atheist who never believed in God. And then the aeroplane got problem in the sky. Everybody was crying to God. That man believed God that day. <laughs> in the sky the thing was almost collapsing people are calling their gods and believers are sitting around him so he also began calling god that day god saved <laughs> and he began serving god i think the only option that uh, jacob has is who is who is god i i know by then by this time uh Jacob not Jacob this man his name is who uh David might not have been there but i'm just assuming might be he might have prayed this prayer that is in the book of Psalms chapter number 121 you remember you know what it says hmm? i will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence comes my help My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keeps thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil he shall preserve thy soul the lord shall preserve 
they going out and they coming in from this time forth and even forevermore amen i think he must have read that i might be in the spirit because now where he is standing things are not really working well so at that point is when he turned to god because there's no option there's no solution elsewhere he has servants so many of them they cannot help him he even tried to do something when you read chapter number 33 even after praying and meeting god he still feel insecure so the chapter 32 speaks to us more about his encounter with god he had to seek for god in a way that never leaves him the same praise the lord you know we must reach a point where you look for god until you meet him until things that has been not that these things has not the thing that has not been working for your life for you for you begin working now he had overnight you know what overnight is like what we have here the whole night was praying huh the bible says in chapter 32 verse 1 are we there we are reading chapter number 32 of genesis verse 1 and jacob went on his way and the angels of the lord met him when jacob saw them he exclaimed this is god's camp so he named the place mahanaim Jacob now sent messengers to his brother Esau in Edom the land of Seir verse 4 says he told them give this message to my master humble greetings from your servant Jacob i have been living with uncle Laban until recently and now i own i own oxen donkeys sheep goats and many servants both men and women i have sent these messengers to inform you of my coming hoping that you'd be friendly to me these are letters that <laughs> he has written letter and write he has sent it is this <laughs> this is jacob your brother i am this and this i'm sending this I have sent these messengers to inform you of my coming hoping that you'd be friendly to us. The messengers returned with the news that Esau was on his way to meet Jacob with an army of 400 men. <laughs> How many 400 men this is army Esau's men according to jacob he thought that they come to finish him hmm? jacob was terrified by the news he divided his household along with the flocks and herds and camels into two camps he thought if esau attacks one group perhaps the other can escape what a life hmm? I think this is a terrible life to live in. Then Jacob prayed, "O oh God of my grandfather Abraham and my father Isaac, O oh God, O oh Lord, you told me to return to my land and to my relatives. <laughs> and you promised to treat me kindly. <laughs> I am not worthy of all the faithfulness and unfailing love you have shown to me, your servant." When I left home I owned nothing except a walking stick <laughs> and now my whole household fills two cups hmm? a very genuine prayer <laughs> Oh Lord please rescue me from my brother Esa I am afraid that he is coming to kill me along with my wife and children 
but you promised to treat me kindly and to multiply my descendants until they become as numerous as the sons along the seashore too many to count I like the way this man prays hmm? look at the way he's praying he remembers what God has promised him he remembers what God has promised him he's telling God you said this I know if this man comes I am already fearing that he might kill me and kill all of us but there is a word that you said that you'll multiply me do we have promises from God so that during the days of danger you remind God a time like this in Marsabit you know this morning, this afternoon we were I went to take favor from the school and then somebody was carrying me in his vehicle and both of them were discussing today it looks like the town is, the town is full I didn't know that the town is always empty <laughs> until I heard what people were saying today then they're asking each other. The town is today the town is so full. So many people are here. And then the other one was answering, he said, You know, today is the Muslims' days, days of prayer. So these are all Muslims who came to pray. So meaning people have not been coming to town. And believers that weren't talking, and they you know the fear is just too much. They even think that you know, imagine you are going through town, but you also think that you might not go up, come back home. Hmm? In a moment of that kind, the promises of God can be what you hold on. When things are not working. Can somebody who has the promises of God die? When God has said something about you, when God has spoken something specific concerning you, is there anything that can come and claim your life? Is there anything? I'm asking a question. God has decided to fulfill his promise for Abraham through who? Jacob, not Esau. And then there is danger everywhere. Is there a possibility that Jacob will die? But then why is he so fearful? Huh? Why is he so fearful? Uh, I know there's a time we find ourselves in such circumstances. Yeah? I don't know what you do. I don't know what you remember. See, you know, Are there days that you found yourself in danger? What did you remember? Huh? Even when you forgot to pray, that day you went to pray. And you know that prayer was very serious, like this one. No. Very serious prayer. You will not even sleep. <laughs> Can you sleep when you, you know, danger is waiting for you? <laughs> huh? Is there a way of? Can you sleep when? <laughs> I remember when we were when we we striked, although I didn't go out. And then they had that policy wa mekuja. Sasita na no susiku. Everybody went his way. <laughs> <laughs> the compound was empty in the midnight. Where do you sleep? And then you have left, but you also fear out there they will catch you. So you're very cautious of what comes up around. And uh, it was so cold in the night, but you cannot sleep. <laughs> huh? Yeah, this, 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 there's always a way that uh, some things that we fear causes us. Hmm? 
You know, you're so alert about the danger in the environment that you don't have any comfort. Even if you're given a very good bed, <laughs> you cannot sleep. I think what I'm trying to say is that uh, now looking at the life of Jacob, I don't know how much he has been close to God. How much he has been praying. Although we see every time he's moving, he's going somewhere, he's settled somewhere, he prays. I think it's not like us today who have opportunity to hear the word of God like we do often. Hmm? This morning also I met another guy who relocated from here, from where Ernest has, has got in and went somewhere and without staying for long he left that place that compound and then he said it was dangerous and then there are some people who come to this church who stay in that compound they are still there so I asked him why did you relocate he said very dangerous that compound I've seen twice people attacked but somebody who entered before you that place and that person is still there. Why did you relocate? He says, dangerous. I left. <laughs> There's danger for somebody in a place and there's still someone who is secure who doesn't see that danger. It depends on how you have uh, connected yourself with God. I mean, how you have connected yourself with with God. I mean, for you to be safe always and not to be afraid of anything. I am saying it depends on how much you have connected yourself to God. Uh, the gap that that Jacob created between him and God you know when you feel that God is a bit far from you you feel you are in danger you feel you are, you are at a point where there might be anything that destroys you but can you come to a point where it is of wherever you are, you are safe and you don't fear anything. I mean safe and secure. Safe. Whatever happens, you are safe. You have this understanding like Jesus. You know Jesus, it doesn't matter where he is. Was going through a, 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 a grave. You know a grave? Like the one that you, you know here, this grave that you see when we were very young, when people could not pass this way, this, this direction at seven. <laughs> you just see some bones coming and hitting your head. <laughs> you don't know where that thing comes. When you pass, is it because you are young that you're thinking like, I know several people who say that they've been hit by some bones. As they are passing, I don't know what is happening. Today it is not there. <laughs> and they say ghost is somewhere chasing after you. Jesus was going <laughs> through a grave like this. And a man came with a big stone to hit him. Did he hit him? Did Jesus run for his life? You saw that? Did you saw that? In that cinema? That film? Did you see? When Jesus arrived, the man took a very big stone. Did Jesus run for his life? <laughs> he didn't. He was secure, so secure. He has power over the hand that is raising. He's the one that created it. He can stop it from doing any harm. Now, I feel like uh, this man called Jacob, reached somewhere where he was not 
Ah, uh, how can I put it? He was not uh, connecting himself well with God. You know, you might reach a point where you live this life of salvation casually. Not when you are very serious. And you create gaps for things to come and attack you. I'm saying you can create gaps. I'm saying gaps. When the devil can just get a loophole and penetrate through and come and threaten you. But many a times problems that hit people brings them back to to God. He is reminding God in verse 20, but you promised to treat me kindly and to multiply my descendants until they become as numerous as the sands along the seashore, too many to count. I know they want to kill me, I know, but you know you have promised me. <laughs> huh? When situations of life are going against what God has said, Pastor Chris was saying today, you know, these people are working on the, what do you call it? One what? The world order. Why they want to bring the whole nations together. And they have planned by 2025 so that the whole world is combined like now what, what they did in 2020. So that the whole world is running after as the WHO is giving instruction, everybody living by that. So that by 2025 at least something is working and then by 2030 they are thinking of having the, the leader who will leading, be leading the whole world, which is the Antichrist. He says they planned and he has all their strategies until 2025, what they have planned. Because until 2025, their plan is to release new COVID. They release COVID-19. They should have been COVID-20, 21, 22, until 25. By the time COVID-25 comes, the whole world has become just like... And then, there's what they planned. He said they cannot succeed because of the church. And he says they are now in big shock because what they decided to achieve in 2020 didn't work. 2021 even embarrassed them more. Their plans never worked. Since the time of the church is not yet, we still have time. Although where we have reached now, the coming of Jesus can happen any any time. Chapter number 24 of Matthew verse 14 it says when this gospel reaches all nations he didn't say all people. He says all, all the nations of the world the end shall come. The end is not about the end of the world. It's talking about the end of the age. That is the end of the age of the church shall come to pass. So these people are trying to stop or they try to come in the time of the church. But it says they cannot. And the, the, the church has been praying. Serious churches have been praying. Although some churches are not aware. Some churches are not aware of what is happening. Hmm? As the Christ calls them COVID ministers. You know those ones who are so much adhering to the to the rules of the COVID. Hmm? Yesterday somebody saw me where my, I was coming in. And then she said, you are the only pastor who don't put on mask. All pastors put on <laughs> all pastors put on mask. You are the only one who don't put on mask. 
Hey, I'm not a COVID pastor. A COVID, in fact, there's something he said today that brought me back to my senses. He said, he says there are so many ministers. And he says from Old Testament to the New Testament, there is a proof of God calling man or any man or woman. The proof is what? Miracle signs and wonders. If you cannot see miracle in the, sun, in, in the life, if you cannot see a miracle in the life of a man of God, and you have been calling him man of God, he says, think twice. And then he says, you shall know by their fruit. When God called Moses, what happened? Miracle. Come into the New Testament. Miracles. If today's pastors don't demonstrate any miracle. And I realized. And that's why they don't even understand what is happening right now. They are not teaching people what is happening currently. And the coming of Jesus is so near. And many of them are not aware. They are not aware. Join us tomorrow. Or today. It's already today. Today is Saturday. And see if I fail at 8. We'll be exposing something there. The truth of the matter is. Jesus can. Rapture can appear. Anytime. You know any time? I'm saying any time. Because if you talk about the preaching of the gospel, breaking all nations of the world, do you want to tell me the nation that have never heard Jesus Christ and the gospel? What has happened over the last 10 years when YouTube came? The guy who came up with the idea of YouTube has made the gospel to spread like never before. Then Facebook is there. Mm -hmm. Which other means are people using to to reveal, release this gospel? So the word has reached this gospel has reached everywhere. Some people are refusing so as long as it has reached all the nations of the world. Like as I'm talking now, somebody can watch me from Canada. Hmm? Somebody. Can watch from? From Canada. Someone can watch from Australia. Somebody can watch from any corner of this world. So I am saying the coming of Jesus is nearer than you think. This kind of prayer we are making, you know this kind of prayer we are doing, is so healthy. Because we will be awake spiritually. The Bible says the trumpet will sound. The trumpet will, will sound. And when the trumpet will sound, you know it's not everybody who will hear. It's only them that are alert spiritually that will rise. Others will continue sleeping. Only to wake up. If you are married and one of you are not serious, you only see that one has disappeared. <laughs> you look around, there's nothing. The Bible says two are walking on the road. One is taken. The other one is. Have you heard of that? That thing is not far from happening. And my is you should not be in a vehicle and you're not qualified for rapture. Because the driver might be taken. You can guess what will happen with that vehicle. You might be in a plane and the pilot is born again. 
the pilot is born again, he disappears. Where will that plane go? More people will die when rapture happens. I'm saying more people will, will die. More that day. More destruction will happen. And there will be news all over the world. Those who are looking for bad news, now they will have time to write more news. They will discover. <laughs> they will begin telling us how many people have left. Yeah, I think I am, it's important to sometimes go back there and remind ourselves of the, the time we are in. So I'm saying that uh, uh, it is important for you to always be in contact with God. I'm saying to be in contact with God to be uh, if you feel that life is not going well things are working in a way that you don't understand like what is happening to this guy he's giving out this promises that God has given him chapter number 32 verse 12 but you promise to treat me kindly and to multiply my descendants until they become as numerous as the sons along the seashore too many to count but then all these problems why verse 13 says Jacob stayed where he was for the night and pre prepared to present to prepare a present for Esau hmm even as he's praying, he's also thinking of how to appease this guy. Hmm? He's, he, the verse 14 says, 200 female gods, 20 male gods, 200 elves, 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, and 10 male donkeys. This guy must be very rich. All this is what he's going to present as a present to Esau. So that he is spared. From any. Look at this man. He is praying to God. He's also looking for another plan B. If the one of God is not working. Let me employ this. Plan B. If I give him this, it looks like corruption, yeah? Bribing. If I give him all these animals, this brother of mine will not finish me. He told his servants to lead them on ahead. Each group of animals by itself, separated by a distance in between. Hmm? So, their first group who are moving in case Saul attacks them the second group will disappear and Jacob is not, the, is not in the first group he put his servants in the first group he is now in the second group any bad things happen he is he's having his own plan verse 17 says he gave this instruction to the men leading the first group. When you meet Esau, he will ask, Where are you going? Whose servants are you? Whose animals are these? You shall reply. They be this belong to your servant Jacob. They are present for his master Esau. He's coming right behind us. <laughs> 19 says, Jacob gave the same instructions to each of the Herdsmen and told them, You are all to say the same thing to Esau when you see him. And be sure to say, Your servant Jacob is right behind us. Jacob's plan was to appease Esau with the presence before meeting him face to face. Perhaps Jacob hoped he will be friendly to us. Huh? And listen, after giving him all these things, he will not beat me. He will not finish me. So the, 
the persons were sent on ahead and Jacob spent that night in the camp. He sent that group ahead of him and he went back to pray the whole night. The whole night. Hmm? The Bible says, but during the night, Jacob got up and sent his two wives, two concubines, and eleven sons across the Jabbok River. After they were on the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob alone in the camp. And a man came and wrestled with him until dawn. He remained alone. To encounter God. He left. He sent everybody. I think so much struggle. No peace. The Bible says, and when he saw that, he prevailed not against him. He touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of, his, of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then the man said, let me go. For it is done. But Jacob panted, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, It is now Israel. Because you have struggled with both God and men and have won. Hmm? It says you have struggled. This, this man could not allow God or can I put it in a very simple way? He could not stop praying until he meets God. I am not leaving you alone until you bless me. That's what he means. Uh, do you have enough energy to pray? Because you want change in your life. I am not leaving you until something changes in me. You see, there has to be some effort from our side if you want to meet God. There has to be an effort of being in his presence as often as possible until we encounter him. Nasema lazima tuenda bidii ya kuwa katika uwepo wa Mungu mpaka tukutane na yeye. Hmm? There has to be. Now that is effort that you, you must have you must have stamina. Like for example pray like this. <laughs> when you struggle to sit up in the night in Kesha, your spiritual strength is so small. Also, your physical strength is, is small. In, in a night like this, you can meet God. I mean, in a night like this, you can meet God and your life will never be the same. I'm saying in a night like this. Uh, my prayer is that Friday night should be you know these are the meetings of one hour <laughs> it's, not, uh, it's not hard to come huh? you can just simply come and say you don't even sleep that one of one hour but this one that you spend the whole night praying like the kind of prayer we are making here for us hearing his word and continuing in prayer this prayer will never live our life the same. This kind of night has more impact on your life 
than the meeting we have during the day. And it is only when you are determined you'll be able to sit upright the whole night or for some hours until you meet God. God can change our stories. I mean God can change our God can change our stories. We cannot meet God and remain the same. But you know, we need to realize we need to come to a point where we, we realize just like Jacob. You know Jacob, the truth is he is a son of a promise. But does God's promise simply mean that everything will work out for you naturally? Does it mean that? Kwa na ahadi kutoka kwa mungu inamanisha uneza katu fwa na yu ahadi jimie. I'm asking a question. Can you just sit just and then wait on God. God, I am waiting on you. You have promised to me. <laughs> Something has to happen. You must seek his face. You must get tired of the environment you are in. You know we are talking about excellence. Excellence means getting fed up with the environment you have been in and rising to another level. For David, for David, he was even having problems with everybody. Fearing everybody. <laughs> hmm? His biggest problem is people around him. He looks like a slave. He doesn't have freedom. The Bible says the fear of man is, is a snare. The fear of man is a snare. The fear of man is a snare. The same way of Kiswedi. Ninini and one and down when you take When you fear man or anybody called human beings. You will not do what is right. You compromise. And what happens? You offend God. So you fear man and you make God your enemy. <laughs> you do opposite what is, what is expected. When you encounter God, you can be free from the fear of man. Like what is, what is happening to this guy. Many of us will know we are we fear men when you begin practicing with the word of God. In fact, there is the time that you are also going to have problem with your parents. When you begin doing exactly what the Bible says. Even with your parents. With some of your friends. I realized many people are not doing what the Bible says. And when you begin doing it, they find it a problem. What I'm saying is Jacob said I am not going to leave you until you bless me. I'm not going to leave you until I am liberated from the fear of men. His encounter with God that night made him free from the fear of Esau. The Bible says when a man's ways please God, he will do what? God will make peace with even his enemies.
even his enemies becomes his his friends when your when your ways pleases him i think as we are coming every friday i know there's some of us who are struggling they come today tomorrow they're not there they come today tomorrow they're not there <laughs> but somebody must choose to remain to be in every occasion someone i'm saying must choose so that you make it a habit to meet god every friday in a night like this you have more hours of prayer and time to hear the word of the word of god but you know there has to be determination the man who was left alone and he could not sleep he had to pray until he meets god alikataa kuacha kuacha malaika they were being told he is the angel until you bless me i am not living is it easy to sit the whole night like this and struggle with god until something happens to me i am not living there has to be some determination it is only when god arrives in your life that what has been disturbing you for a while will leave your life as we are seeing in the life of Jacob here what is your name jacob asked him why do you ask the man replied then blessed he blessed jacob there jacob named the place peniel face of god that's what the name peniel peniel means for he said i have seen god face to face yet my life has been spared the sun rose as he left peniel and he was limping because of his lips hips because of his hip that is why even today the people of israel don't eat meat from near the hip in memory of what happened that night so he woke up in the morning he left when the sun is up he experienced god the whole night he sought i'm praying that god will give us that grace to pray for hours until morning amen i'm said to pray for hours until until morning not to begin struggling You know many of us are used to service and the service where you come at 10 and by 1 you are already tired so that even during kesha you are applying the same principle now it is 1 you began almost 10 now 3 hours it is now <laughs> we can pray until morning amen is it possible Are you looking at me you're saying that uh, that one I don't know now. Bila mna niangalia nasema Mungu anajua. Yeah but you this is how we, we we just need to we need to grow up into this. You see we you have to prevail until you sit up after you hear the word of god you start and pray after you pray then you expect more change that god will do for us amen yeah i'm saying you expect god to do more so what i'm saying is jacob decided to pray because it is just too much 
what he has been going through is just too much. The doors that are shut is too much. I mean too much. I mean too much. Too much, you know. There are problems you should not allow until it finishes you. Kuna shida unaacha mpaka inakumaliza inakuangamiza. If you have God on your side, you can be free from any problem. And uh, if you go into the next chapter, what you realize is when he met Esau and then all the things he sent him all those animals Esa was asking him I don't need them and then also said I don't have problem with with you I have enough animals I don't need these things and I don't have problem with with you did it work for him Did that prayer work? Yeah, it worked. It worked. This tells us that God has solution to all problems. We might not know how God worked on Esau not to be an enemy of Jacob. Might be the very moment that Jacob encountered God. God must have turned done something in the life of Esau. That's why prayer is so important. We are talking about uh, Esther. We are studying the book of Esther every morning. The same way that Haman worked on how to kill all the Jews all and they were working on one clean year that one is to be implemented over one year where they make sure that in all in over 120 counties like Marsabit like Kenya you know for us we have 47 there's there are over 120 this they 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 have to inform everybody of a period of one year and then one day they kill all Jews. And they planned that thing for some time. Until they prayed. When they prayed that plan. Fell. So prayer has ability to stop anything. That is working against you. Against your destiny. Against your future. Against your family against your work. I mean, and that's why in a prayer of this kind, where you take long hours in prayer, you deal with all those issues. I don't know this year what you're thinking about. It is 2022. Not 2020. Not 2021. A night of this kind, uh, it has to be, you have to make coming to Kesha a priority. Hmm? You have to make coming to Kesha a priority. Where you pray. I don't think if there is any day within the week you pray like today. Have you ever prayed like tonight, end of this week? <laughs> Some of us have, at least you have prayed for two hours. The first two hours, non-stop. Just doing this, going everywhere. You don't have this opportunity other days. And uh, you have to consider 
a great opportunity. As you make this prayer of a period of the year, as you make this prayer, things change little by little in your life. I mean, things change. By the end of the year, your life is never the same. And we must learn these long prayers. We must learn. This is what changes our life. You look at other child, look at believers, normal believers. Their life is just the same. They sing and say, Happy New Year. And their life is no much change. No much progress. Which happy new are you talking about? When you are the same, the same problem every year, the same level of life every year, The same. Now we console each other. We console each other. Happy New Year. We na change and buzi. We na kula. My share. We go in for two. Amo badili. Amen. Wana sifiwe. So I'm saying we need to make intentional move to commit ourselves to this kind of prayers. You are not only praying for yourself. When we come like this, we can begin praying for this land. And as our prayer persists over a period of months and years, the demons that have been disturbing this city will be relocating from here. This is fire. This is prayer. We're not just making how do you call it? We're not wasting time here. The speaking in tongues we are speaking is never giving the devil peace. At Aundoka to pole pole, little by. When you come today, I'm a song. And a song. <laughs> a song until by the time a year or two years are over, he has cleared the air, the environment. God removes the problems we have as we come into his, into his presence every day little by little until all the problems are removed and we remain at liberty healthy and successful. Little by little when you reach chapter number 7 of the book of Deuteronomy Look at what he says as I finish. And some of you are praying to God, I finish. I am finishing. Deuteronomy 7. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, 21. Thou shalt not uh -huh. no, do not be afraid of those nations. For the Lord your God is among you and he is a great and awesome God the Lord your God will drive those nations out ahead of you little by little you will not clear them away all at once for if you did the wild animals would multiply too quickly for you but the Lord your God will hand them over to you he will throw them into complete confusion until they are destroyed. He said, little by little. That is when they were coming to the Canaan. And he's saying, I will remove these people in the land little by until they are removed. Also, God will change us little by little. Little by little. Little by 
within no time you realize that you have taken over so as we are coming here every day every week for kesha things are happening in our lives little by god is changing something in us little by little and then over a period of time haba na haba what do they say haba na haba ujaza little by little little by little and then by the time you are there for a year or two or three things have turned around he says i will not change you in a day imagine if god you are looking for money and god gives you 10 million today What will happen? That money will destroy you. You don't even know what to do with it. I don't know why Safaricom is not bringing those what is it called? Those things that we were I think every January they were bringing like you are you you do some what is it called and then mention unashinda milioni. Remember unashinda milioni. And then umtu anashinda milioni leo baada ya mwezi mmoja hana hata ndururu alipeleka wapi hiyo pesa hmm. God has to develop your capacity to handle things before he puts it in your little by little little by little little by little Amen I think that is enough for now Praise the Lord Father we are thankful for your word we receive it with thanksgiving little by little you are turning around our lives little by little you are building stamina within us to pray if we began praying 30 minutes we got 1 hour 2 hours 3 hours little by little we will grow we will increase and we will become more in the name of Jesus and father this year we are making this kesha a priority we are going to come and pray more and the more we pray irrespective of whether we feel tired or whatever something is happening to us you are changing our atmosphere our spiritual our things in the spiritual world and as changes is happening within us tangible changes will be seen physically in our life We are not praying in vain. We will realize this the the reason or the very effect of this prayer. And that's why this year we will commit ourselves more in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as we take this tea, we receive with thanksgiving. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.